So it's my login github io slash parity dash dap dash example. Okay. Does anyone need more time to get the link? Okay, so let me start. Uh, so I would like, to, so Yuta was presenting yesterday uh, our new Parity UI, and maybe you've noticed that there is a, a tab there called Applications. And uh, I would like to show you today on this workshop how to build a uh, decentralized application. Uh, let's put decentralized in quotes, because it will be running on the blockchain, but it won't be hosted uh, on uh, any decentralized solution yet. Um, and yeah, we'll go through the whole process of developing the DAP locally and then publishing the DAP to our uh, DAP registry and making it discoverable for everyone using Parity UI. Okay, uh, so first, how to get Parity? Um, for those of you who doesn't have, how many of you doesn't have Parity yet? And want to participate in the workshop, of course. Okay, so you can get it from the release page. Uh, there is a 1.4.5 beta release, and this is what you should get. Or go to, uh, or go to ifcore.io, there is also a version there. Or you can clone parity and compile it on your own uh, if you have Rust compiler. Um, if you are a Mac user, uh, for this workshop, please don't use the, the installer because uh, it will be difficult to switch to a test network for you, okay? Okay, so if you have parity, oh, okay. Yeah? When you say docus install, do you mean docus brew install? A brew install is fine if you, if you add the beta flag to install the newest version. Oh, okay, so it's, so it's even better, yeah, it's the latest version. So brew is okay, but uh, in, in beta release, we also uh, included um, a one-click installer that installs Parity and runs it as a background service. Uh, and it's, it's like difficult to switch networks if you have this. So it will be easier for this workshop to have a version that you can run in your terminal and if you go to terminal and run parity dash dash version, you should see a version there. If you don't see, then it means that there is something wrong and I will help you later to install parity and make it work. Okay? And uh, during the workshop, we will be also connecting to a test network. So not on the main network because we don't lo want to lose uh, real eater. We will use test eater. And a uh, couple of days ago, or maybe a week ago, we have changed the test networks. So there was new test network um, uh, bootstrapped. And the new test network is called Ropsten. Uh, I think it's a metro station in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Mm, and you need to run parity with chain Ropsten flag to actually connect to this, to this test network. It's, uh, the chain is very small there, so you will be synced pretty quickly. Okay, um, so maybe let me jump to uh, Parity UI right now to show you this different kind of dApps that we support that are listed here. Okay, so this is my Parity instance. Maybe make it smaller, bigger. Okay, and um, you can see that I have a couple of applications visible. And here, th this is, I think, latest master. Probably on beta you won't see this. But uh, we have different kinds of applications. So some of them are built in. So they ship with Parity, and they are part of the, of the Parity package. They are actually compiled into the um, Parity binary. Uh, on the top, I see local applications. So those applications are uh, hosted on my local file system, so they are not visible for everyone. It's just my instance of Parity that has them. And at the very bottom, we see um, 
applications that are coming from the network. And what does it mean? It means that they are, there is a contract on the, also on the test network and also on the main network that it's called DAP registrar. You can check the source code of the contract in our if core slash contracts repository. And you can register the application there and it's, it's made discoverable for, for all the people running parity. So those applications are sort of registered on the blockchain and if you click them, we actually, actually fetch the content um, for this application. Uh, right now we are fetching it from GitHub, so the requirement is to publish that application uh, to GitHub, but I will show you later that we can in the future perhaps support IPFS and Swarm to, to fetch the content from the centralized hosting solutions. Okay, so back to my slides. So we have this built-ins applications, local applications coming from your file system, and network applications visible for everyone. Um, okay, and the first step will be to create a local application. Oh, okay. Uh, are you following the slides on your local computers? Okay, so. Yeah, maybe if I open terminal, it will be better. Okay. So I will now show you how to create local application. Uh, so first we need to go to parity slash dapps. Uh, it's a standard directory where parity stores local applications. There is a flag to uh, customize it. Okay. And when I list it here, you can see that I have two of them already. Let me remove the second one and recreate it for you. So first I need to create a directory. Let's call it my DAP. And the only thing that I need is index.html file. So I will create a very simple index.html file with hello world here. Okay. Okay, so the commands that I'm running, they are also on the slides, so you can follow it later. Okay, uh, so you can see that it's here. And now I need to restart my parity instance, and I, I should see my application there. So let me do it. Um, okay, let me close that for a while. This is my parity instance. Okay, and I do parity UI chain Robston. Okay, it's opening, um, sorry, it's opening a browser window for me. Um, um, local host, yep. Yeah. And let's go to applications. And you can see that there is my DAP thing. It says local. And when I click it, I can see hello world here. Okay. If I now change something in this index.html file, okay, and refresh the page, I will get our, my, new, uh, my new content here. Okay. So that's it for the local DAP. Um, so, of course, we don't only uh, have static content, but we will actually would like to fetch uh, something from the blockchain and interact with parity nodes. And the common way of doing this is to uh, do RPC calls. Is any one of you familiar with RPC calls in Ethereum? Okay, no one. Have everyone, anyone heard about Web3 library, Web3.js? So WebFreeJS is a library that allows you to fetch something from the running node. And uh, we, uh, we were using WebFree library for some time, and then we started to build our own li library. It's called ParityJS. I think Yuta mentioned it uh, yesterday also. Um, there are a couple of reasons why, why did we make ParityJS. Uh, one is that it's, it's promise-based right from the start. 
uh, of course you can like uh, include promises to Web3 and, and have the same, but uh, it's always something that you have to do on top of Web3. Uh, we don't have any, we don't support any synchronous requests as Web3 does, so the, the code is much smaller. Uh, the code is also more modular, so we have separated the API part of the ABI parsing part. Um, there is less magic, let's say, so we are not doing any conversions for you as Web3 does. So for instance, you have to specify uh, hex values instead of decimals. And uh, it, for us, it's also easier to maintain and extend because the code is smaller, it's our code. We are introducing some custom extensions to Parity and it's much easier to do it in our own library than in Web3. Uh, it's also public, so you can use it writing your own uh, applications if you wish. Um, yeah, that, that's it. Okay, and to do some RPC calls, we first need to include uh, parity to our index.html file. So let, let me do it in the, in the terminal again. Okay, so this is my HTML file. We'll generate a basic um, HTML structure. Okay, this will be my first step. And then I can import a library. So for instance, I will import partyutils slash partyjs. Okay, and uh, parity node is actually hosting those files for you. And those are pre-configured uh, partyjs or web free JS instances that you can use to make queries. So you don't have to specify the, the address or anything. It will just work if you include it and then fire a query. Okay, so let's fire something. Let's do parity API if, and let's fetch user accounts. Um, and it's promise based, so uh, calling accounts will return a promise for you and then you need to process the promise in some particular way. So let's say we have accounts, and I will just write it down to a pre-tag here. Okay. Okay. So this will display all the accounts in this pre-tag here. And of course I should also handle an <coughs> error if it happens. So let's just print it out to the console. Okay. Um, yep, let's see how the DAP looks like. So I will jump to the browser and refresh the page. And hopefully, yep. So this is the list of my accounts fetched by Parity JS library. Okay. Uh, this is why did we make Parity JS? Okay. Um, I think I will skip that part because, uh, I mean, you can write your application in pure JavaScript. So how many of you are front-end developers here? Okay. Uh, how many of you used React before? Okay. So React is our framework of choice uh, when developing Parity. Right now, I mean, tomorrow it might be a different framework uh, as it happens in the front-end world. Um, and there is a really nice uh, generator from Facebook to write uh, React applications, and it will be like a special task for you um, to use this one instead of writing in pure JavaScript, if you want. But let me skip that part on the, on the demo right now. Okay, so uh, next thing. Uh, our application works somehow, but if we go to the application list and parity, it actually looks bad because it doesn't have any icon and also name and description is is crappy, it's just taken from the directory. So first thing, let's add an icon. So what we need to do is just 
copy this, and create an icon.png file in, um, in our application directory, so here. So I, have, uh, I had an icon prepared already. So you can see that now the, the directory contains index.html file and also icon.png. And if I refresh my application list page, it shows the icon here. Okay. So icon.png. Uh, next thing, how to solve the name and description. And we have something that is called a manifest file. So uh, the application needs to tell us what is the name, description, and author, and so on. It's, ju it's just a JSON file. The whole structure is here. Uh, it contains fields like name, description, version, author, ID, and icon URL. So you can also customize the URL if you don't like the default. And let me copy that to my manifest JSON file. Okay. So I will open up manifest JSON, then paste the content, okay, and then let's refresh the page. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, so manifest files are read only when parity starts. I think we, we should make the experience a little bit better, a little bit better here. So I need to restart my parity to actually see the changes. Okay, closing, starting again, going back to a browser, and refreshing the page. Yeah, and the manifest has been read, so now it, the name is correct, the description is correct, and the author is also correct. Um, okay, so pretty much the first uh, step is done. So I have local application interacting with, with my node via this RPC calls using parity.js library. It has a proper name and uh, an icon. So now I would like to share this dApp with other people. So I would, make it, I would like to make it public. So what I need to do is first push it to GitHub. So this is a requirement that we have right now um, because we need to host the, those applications from somewhere. Uh, our understanding was that most of the DAP developers are using GitHub anyway. So let's just use GitHub for now. If we have IPFS ready, Swarm ready, then we will switch to those decentralized hosting solutions. Um, so first we need to push to GitHub, then we need to register the content. Um, I will show what, what it means in a while. And then we need to add to this DAP register to, registrar to, to, to make it discoverable. Uh, we are doing it on Robsten, and we will be doing some contract calls. So we, you will probably need some testnet eater. And there is an address here, which you can use to uh, get yourself an eater on testnet. So just copy paste the address, um, the URL here, and put your account address, and you will get some testnet eater. OK. so. Uh, first, we need to push it to GitHub, so let me do it quickly. Okay, git init, git at all, git commit, first commit. Okay, then I need to create a repo, and it turns out that I already did. So the whole content is, oh, sorry, um, is available on my GitHub. It's called parity dap example. And it contains those, those files here. So index.html, icon.png, and manifest.json file. And now I need to register the content. So I will go to parity UI right now. And click Applications. And go to GitHub Hint application. If you don't see the application, then there is a little edit button here where you can change the visibility. I'm not sure if that one is visible by default, but if it's not, then click Edit. Okay, and we, ha we get this uh, quite simple UI that allows you to do this. So let's take icon first. Let's copy a link, 
let's paste it here. Okay. And what happens under the, under the hood is that your parity node is fetching this file, uh, is checking what's the hash of the file, and then you can register that this, this hash is available under the link that you pasted here. Okay? So I already registered that. So this is hash of my icon. And the nice thing is that when I now go to localhost 8080 slash hash of the content, it will actually display my icon. So it's kind of similar to what IPFS and Swarm is doing, but we are not using them as the backend yet. Um, we are just fetching content from GitHub or anywhere on the internet. We verify that the hash is correct and we serve it. So in a, in a same way, you of course need to register that to a contract to, to make it discoverable for everyone, but you can register your hash addressed content um, and have it available on each parity instance. Okay, so yeah, let's go back to my slides. Where are they? Here. So I have registered my icon. I need to register my manifest JSON file. And um, the last thing is that I need to register the whole DAP to be available. Okay? So let's try to do it. Let's go again to this um, uh, GitHub hint uh, duplication. There is a button content bundle here. And if you want to register the whole DAP, so you can have as many files as you want there, uh, you need to specify the owner and the repo on GitHub, example, and the specific commit hash. Okay, let me take the commit hash from somewhere here. Commits. Okay, and we can see commit hash. Okay, and what happens now is pretty much the same as what happened with, uh, with single files. So we fetched the whole DAP and we hashed the, um, the content. And now if I go to this address, so localhost 8080 slash hash of the content, I actually see the DAP that is published on GitHub. And if you do it on your own nodes, you should see exactly the same if you are fully synced with Robston Network. Um, okay, so, so that's the first part. So we first registered the content, but then if you want to send your, send your DAP to a friend, you actually need to send the whole link. So you need to tell him, okay, this is uh, the hash of my DAP and please access this DAP. And the last piece is to make your DAP discoverable, okay? So this is a slide about registration. And this is the last part. So we need to make our DAP discoverable and register the hash that we created to a separate contract that will make it available for our Parity JS users, okay? Um, so there is a contract that allows you to do it. The contract is called DAP Registrar, and I have it here already. The source code is, of course, on our GitHub. Uh, you can compile it and just watch the contract, and you can fire those queries manually. Um, so there are a couple of methods here. Uh, but we've, we have also built an app that allows you to register your content easily. But unfortunately, it's not available yet, so, it's, so it wasn't released. It's only in the master branch of our um, repository. So what you need to do is you need to clone the repo, uh, then go to a JS folder in our repo, and run the master version of the UI against your node. So it maybe sounds complicated, but it's not that complicated. So if I go to... Um, to my cloned repo. There is a JS folder here. I go to JS, then npm install. OK. 
okay. And then npm start. And it will actually run the development version of the UI. So if you'd like to contribute for the UI, this is also what, what will be the process you have to go through. So you're running the development version of the UI and it will make the DAP register application available for you. So let's wait until it's loaded. Okay. Okay, so it's ready now. It should actually open my browser. Okay, and if you see this with development UI, um, it's because we have a, a security feature in Parity that is called origin validation. And localhost uh, 3000 is not allowed to access your, um, your Parity node. And we need to disable this validation to develop uh, latest UI. And we do it by running Parity UI with UI no validation flag. Okay. And let me go back to my development version. Which one was it? Yeah, it's that one. Okay. And then if I go to applications, I can see that there is a new built-in application called DAP registration. And in this DAP, you can actually register your uh, a new DAP. So let's try it. I will create new here. Uh, it's generated ID for me. It's, the ID is not really that important. Let's press register. Okay, so on the test network, the registration is free. On the main network, it's not free. There is a fee there. And um, the kind of sad part from the centralization point of view is that we are owning this contract right now. Um, and uh, the idea is that when there is a good enough DAO that can manage those registrars, we will hand over the ownership of those registrars to the DAO. So it's, it's not like you are paying us right now to register your DAP, but it's like in the future, we will uh, move it to a more decentralized way if there is a solution ready. Yes, there is Ethereum name service, but that one is more powerful than Ethereum name service because this makes the DAPs discoverable. We have metadata that you can register to uh, particular um, entry. So for instance, right now when I will be registering my DAP under the same name, I'm registering the icon, the manifest, and the content bundle. And I can have many metadata to the same register your content. And the fourth task is to make it discoverable. So register your DAP to the DAP registrar that we have. Okay, and pretty much that's it. Do you have any questions to the things that I presented? Um, yeah. how, how do you get to this uh, registry screen? I think it was the third tab on your browser. Can you, can you show me again how, how to yep. find it? Yep. Mm, so that, or maybe the fourth one? I yeah, know. that's the thing here. So this is running localhost 3000 because this is the latest UI that we have in GitHub repository. So the DAP was not released yet. If you are running master version, most probably you already have this DAP. But if you don't, you need to clone the repo and run the, the, latest, um, the latest UI locally. And if you don't see the DAP, then there is the edit button here. And you need to check the checkbox here to make it visible. Okay, and then it should show up here and it's a built-in DAP. So I will be helping you um, the whole time now if we have some dedicated time for the tasks and we can solve those problems. <coughs> mm, any other questions? So let's say that they had an application to get it. Does this mean that 
all the parity nodes, which show the application under the application. Yes, that's so correct. Do they need to look for the application? Uh, they need to search for it somehow? So if, if someone is fully synced with the network that you registered your application uh, on, then it will be visible for all the nodes. But as I said, the contract is owned by na us right now. What was the in this So um, we reserve the right to kind of the register applications that are offensive in some way. If there is a better mechanism to um, manage the, the list, then we will switch to that. But for now, it's just kind of curated list, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, because let's say that, you know, um, unless you use something like ENS, I expect that you will receive um, requests like from companies because their names were taken. Mm -hmm. were taken. So what do you do in this case? So let's I guess... Say that somebody registers uh, the uh, oracleized keyword. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we might then send a request yeah, so as I said, right now it's, it's owned by us and it's governed by us. So you kind of come to us and ask to remove this. And this is us making the decision. If we have uh, some kind of decentralized way, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how ENS solves that, but if there is a, a, a way, then we will switch it. It's just, you know, it's bleeding edge what, what, we, we, what we want to show. So we want the dApps to be created right now. And those kind of problems might be solved. On the on the way. Okay, and I have another question. Sure. So um, uh, you showed the way um, how to <coughs> how you can assess content uh, via the hash, right? Mm -hmm. um, so let's say that I don't register an app. So how does my node do the lookup for stuff from the hash to understand mm -hmm. where to fetch the content from? So we use the GitHub hint application. And it's a separate contract on Ethereum blockchain. And this contract contains the mapping from hash to URL. And who is sending a transaction to this? Yes. If is, is it you as a company? Or sorry? Who is sending the transaction? The, the owner of the content. I mean, oh, so when I click on file link and they do register, yes. it's an actual transaction? Yes, it's a transaction. Yes. Ah, okay. And then you, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter um, so so we, we are checking the hash before displaying you the content. So if there is a hash mismatch, then, then it won't be registered. Uh, but yeah, I mean, anyone can kind of submit the, the content to this contract and say, this hash is available under this URL. And is it checked again when, once I fetch the content? Yes. So if, if the content was changed on the web 2.0, then the user will get hash mismatch. Um, okay, so the, the node will download the content first, check yes. the yes. and then display it if it does match. Yes, there is also a hard limit on how large the content can be. <laughs> and I think it's uh, 10 megabytes right now. Uh, oh, so, sorry, maybe, maybe even less. So I think it's 10 megs for content bundle and, and 5 megs for, for a single file. Uh, yes, I think this contract doesn't have any, any fees right now. Um, any other questions? Okay, cool. So um, let's try to um, build those dApps.